Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Thing. Okay, so this is going to sound absolutely crazy. Um, people are going to hate on me for this, but this is the first time I've ever seen this movie. If, if you're looking at the title of this video, um, it's going to, you know, say like the year that this was released just to just to clear everything up I'm I'm um, reviewing the thing like the the John Carpenter one from 1982 um, and I've, I've never seen it before I've never seen the one from 2011 either and I think even I think the 1982 one is a remake of I think the thing from another world I could be wrong but I know the 1982 one is a remake, and then there's a remake of the remake. I mean, the the whole remake thing has been going on forever, but, I mean, in, in the case of this movie, so, some remakes are good. I think I think I heard, like, like, Scarface is a remake, so, I mean, if it's, like, a remake, but it came out in the 80s, it's, it's usually pretty legit. Honestly, I know people hate on, like, all the horror remakes from the 2000s and 2010s, but I actually like a lot of those. I have like a, a special place in my heart for those. I mean, some of those are just like solid. I mean, I'm not e I'm not even ashamed of liking them. I I think they're legit. Like the Friday the Thirteenth remake, I, I, I feel like I've said this in countless videos, but I love that movie. I think it's just one of the most solid Friday the Thirteenth movies in the entire franchise. But getting back to what I was saying. So, I've never seen this movie. I know it's a classic. This is like one of the most well-regarded horror movies of all time. This is on everyone's like top five, top ten list. This is a lot of people's favorite movie, favorite horror movie. Like, people love this movie. And, I mean, maybe in the back of my mind, that was part of the reason why I didn't want to check it out. Because there was like so much hype around it. I don't think it was like super hyped up when it came out. Like I think it made money, like it made a little bit, but it wasn't like some huge blockbuster that everyone was talking about. But like over the years, I think people like once they checked it out on video and DVD and stuff, they realized like this, this is like top tier. This is like one of the best horror movies ever. And, you know, I'm glad to say I love this movie. I thought it was so great like it totally met my expectations like I said like in my mind I had built it up so much um, that like this is such like a well-regarded movie like I didn't want to not like it and I really liked it and you know it's gonna sound crazy that I, I've never seen it before I mean what am I gonna do I, I can't watch every single movie I've seen a ton of John Carpenter movies um, I own a bunch of them like I've seen a ton of his movies all right so it's I mean I'm like on here like defending myself like like you know I'm not I'm not like a fake John Carpenter fan I don't even know why I gotta say that but I've seen like so many of his movies I just never got around to seeing this one sat down and watched it it was awesome totally worth the hype but um speaking of you know just John Carpenter movies in general I mean, you got a great cast, and, you know, two of the main guys that I recognized are in some other John Carpenter movies, so, you got Kurt Russell, uh, he's, like, the lead character, of course, he's in, you know, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, he's in Escape from New York, he's in Escape from LA, I haven't seen that one yet, um, Escape from New York, I'm actually not the biggest fan of. I think it's, like, it's good, but it's just, like, not really my cup of tea. But Big Trouble in Little China, like, Jack Burton, that's my dude. Like, homeboy's got the lipstick on. He's, like, throwing knives, missing. Like, Big Trouble in Little China, that's my jam. And then, an another dude that I recognize, you got Keith MF and David up, up in this movie, dude. Talking about... Keith David from They Live, dude. That's like, dude, he's in like the most, that's like the most, one of the most famous 
movie fight scenes of all time with him and uh, Roddy Piper. They're fighting for like 10 minutes. It's the most drawn out fight scene in movie history, but it's awesome. It's not, it just, it just, it just works. It's just like, it's just the best. All right. So yeah, They Live, that's a another good movie. Uh, Keith David, I know him from They Live. I know he's in, been in a ton of stuff, but yeah, I know him mainly from They Live and especially that awesome fight scene. But also, um, from, he was, he like played himself in Saints Row 4 and I played that game when it came out and beat it because I was like a huge fan of uh, the Saints Row franchise. Saints Row 3 is my favorite. That's like one of my favorite games of all time. Like I, I love Saints Row 3, but Saints Row 4 people didn't like that much. And I didn't think it was as good as part three, like out of the franchise, part three is my favorite but Saints Row 4 I did like and it was Keith Dave I like remember him you know playing himself being a, a, like one of the main characters in that and I'm pretty sure he they like recreated the fight scene with him and Roddy Piper from They Live in that game so I mean the, the, it gets brownie points right there like how could you not like Saints Row 4 you get you get superpowers yeah it's a little outlandish but the series was already outlandish so whatever but um yeah, you got you got a good cast. Kurt Russell and Keith, da uh, Kurt Russell and Keith David were great. Like everyone in the cast was great. The acting was phenomenal. It was it was top tier. Just I mean, all the characters were like believable. Like when they were, you know, scared. When they were like not trusting each other. And something I'm gonna get to later that I want to point out is like the characters in this movie actually made like really smart decisions which you know a lot of times especially in the horror genre characters just make stupid decisions and it takes you out of the movie the characters in this were smart they were realistic they're believable not over the top which that's cool sometimes but like this movie was legit like this is i can see why this is regarded as as a classic because just every every aspect was legit so i I'm just looking over my notes. I already, I said, I just wrote down the movie is worth the hype. I already pretty much talked about that. Now I'm going to get into just like, this movie, it's like scary on so many different levels. You know, there like there's, because I would like, you know, when you're watching a movie, you're kind of like putting yourself in the shoes of the characters. And I'm thinking like, okay, they're dealing with so much. So, you know, you have the threat of the thing itself. It's the scary monster. And then you can't trust anyone because you think they might be the thing. So, like, you're not trusting anyone. And then because of that, like, people are going crazy. The one guy who's, like, doing all the stuff on the computer, he finds out that, like, the thing could, like, spread and infect everyone. He goes insane because it's, like, the, the whole world could end. The whole population could be wiped out. So it's, like... You got people not trusting each other. People are going crazy. Um, they're isolated. They're in this like, you know, little research facility in the middle of nowhere. I think it's like in the Antarctic. So I was just thinking throughout the whole movie, like, you know, there's no, there's no, probably no phone lines around. Like they can't have a phone. They can't contact anyone. Um, there's no like police around. There's like nothing. They're completely isolated. Like there, there's nothing. There's like no civilization in like walking distance and driving distance. Like they have a helicopter. I guess they could have just dipped on the helicopter, but you can only fit like two people. So, and they kind of wanted to isolate it, but like that's scary. Where it's like you can't call for help. You can't call the police. Like, and the weather. Like they're talking about, it was like 40 below, gonna be 100 below. So it's like, you know the weather is scary like there's just there's just like so many different things going on like just if you were to just find some monster you would be you know you'd be shell-shocked you'd be totally freaked out you wouldn't know how to deal but then like you got all these other little factors going on as well like I would be so scared and 
I feel like the like the characters like handled it well for the for the most part. I mean, of course, they kind of like broke down a little bit, which I would be breaking down like crazy. I wouldn't be trusting anyone. I would have I would have a little you know I would keep I would be keeping the thing on me. You know, like don't get too close. I got that I got that revolver right here. I got that you know rifle right here. You know, like you better back off. Like I, I don't trust you. But they were actually like you know pretty composed handling themselves well i thought um kurt russell like him stepping up as the leader like i feel like he did a good job he just like you know got everyone under control he was like kind of unconventional like i mean he just shot that one guy and that guy wasn't even like you know he, he wasn't even the thing he was just human and he so like kurt russell was like a little unconventional and like got got a little you know got a little malicious but i mean in that situation what are you gonna do he has to like take control so i mean he took control and then the plan was really good that's what i what i touched on earlier how like the characters um made smart decisions i really like that whole sequence where they're like testing the blood awesome and then the the whole idea where where they have to like burn it because you know, like I said, it's, you know, 40 below, 100 below, and even if they can't kill the thing, the thing will just freeze itself and preserve itself, and it will eventually take over humanity, so we're like, they know that, and they're not going to let it happen, so they're, they're like, we got to burn it, we're going to blow the whole place up, like, they totally have a plan, they execute it, it's well thought out, I like I said, the blood testing thing was cool. Like that that whole sequence was cool. And then the one guy like turns and it's awesome. It's awesome stuff. Um now this got it this is I mean, this channel I'm always talking about practical effects. Alright, I talk about horror movies, I talk about slasher movies a lot. The the hype around this movie, part of the hype is that this this is like if if you're looking for good practical effects, it's like if anyone brings up practical effects, I feel like the thing is brought up. And going in, I was like, are the practical effects like really gonna be that legit? Cause I've heard like throughout the years how good the practical effects, the creature effects are in this. And let me tell you, like who whoever says like this movie has some of the best practical effects ever, they are not lying. It just like the the creature like is shape shifting into different things all the time. It's all practical. There's like so many like animatronic moving things, and it doesn't look fake at all. It looks so realistic. It looks good. I mean, this is like you know pre CGI, so there's no CGI. It's just it's perfect. It's just all practical, super realistic, awesome, super like creative. Like the you know all these like different like iterations of the monster like when it's like that like demonic dog and then like it comes out of the guy's chest and he gets like he gets like teeth on his chest and then he like turns into the it turns into like a spider thing like it uh oh, it's 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 just it's top tier stuff what more can i say um and then another thing that i want to point out is i mean this is true for a lot of John Carpenter movies, pretty much all of his movies are a little bit slower, you know, and I thought, I thought this movie was very slow, but like that, that didn't like hurt the movie. Like it was a, it was a good slow, like, you know, I, I don't, you know, if, if, if a movie is slow and it doesn't work and it's boring I'll get on here and tell you but like th this movie like the pacing was great it, like it just like built up like perfectly it was just like it's like you're on a roller coaster and then once you got to the third act it was just like blast off you know like it, it was just it was slow it was but it but it wasn't it wasn't boring like there was it didn't always have to have stuff going on, like, because there was always, like, this, like, tension, you know what I mean? Like, just the little, like, s like, little interactions between the characters and stuff where they're, like, testing the blood or the one guy's, like, pulling up the stats on the computer. Like, everything, everything that was in the movie 
like meant something needed to be in the movie like I couldn't really think of anything else that could be cut like everything needed to be in the movie it's like a little bit longer than other John Carpenter movies it's like close to two hours but it, it felt quick like the pacing was good I mean it was awesome it was it was can't go wrong with a nice slow burn horror movie come on I mean it's classic stuff um and then yeah getting into uh spoiler territory here I so yeah if, if you've never seen this um you know turn off the video getting into uh, some spoilers getting into the ending so I like I like that the ending was ambiguous it was perfect you know like if if there would have been some like resolution or whatever it kind of would have ruined it it's just like it just leaves like are they infected are they not are they gonna live like who knows and like it's I mean it's it's like the ending of the first Halloween where it's just like it's like Michael Myers just walks off like who who not like it's it, sometimes it's more interesting when when they don't like spoon feed everything to you and you can kind of like think in your mind like was it really Keith David's character was it Kurt Russell's character like what happens to them it's kind of it's kind of nice when movies like leave like a little bit to interpretation then you can get on some like you know, like, fan theories and blah, 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 like, that's fun, like, I, I was, like, thinking about it, like, a little bit after, you know, where I'm, like, what did happen, like, I don't, I don't know, did the whole world get infected, who knows, nobody knows, but it's, like, fun to think about, so, great ambiguous ending, and then the last thing that I wanted to touch on, this is just a very random thought, but, um, I was just thinking this, like, the whole time I was watching the movie, like, so this this these are research scientists. I mean, if some of the people are not scientists, like I think like one guy is just like a cook, and then Kurt Russell's character, he's you know like their helicopter pilot. But for the most part, they're all research scientists. Like, why do they just randomly have so many guns and flamethrowers? Like you, because because it's like they weren't anticipating this. You know, they weren't like they weren't like thinking like yeah we're gonna go do our little you know, research and, you know, there might be, you know, a giant monster there. So, you know, let's just, let's, uh, let's get strapped up. We need shotguns. We need revolvers. Let's get some flamethrowers too, just in case, you know, we can't, uh, you know, just in case we got to burn this mutant creature. I was just, I mean, are research scientists usually this strapped up? I don't know, but I mean, it, it was, it was cool. And I mean, for the movie, like they had to have, you know, weapons and stuff, but I was just like, I was just thinking, like, would all these scientists, like, really have that many guns? Like, maybe one, but, like, would, I mean, how would that even get cleared? Like, they're like, let me get a research grant from this uh, university, and then, yeah, like, on the bill, you know, like, okay, we need, uh, we need $10,000 for the research, and, yeah, 2000 of that or 3,000 is actually just going to guns and ammo, so the rest, the rest will be for research, though, but, um, I don't know, that's just, like, some silly thing that I was thinking, I just like to, like, sometimes analyze, like, little nitpicky weird things about the movie, but, I, yeah, I mean, those, those scientists were, were packing, they were, they were ready, you know, they could, they could shoot, you know, they were, uh, they were about that, uh, lifestyle, but anyways, um, I, I went over everything on my notes, I pretty much uh, said everything that I have to say. So yeah, um, at the end of the day, I'm really glad that I watched this movie. Um, it was absolutely awesome. I totally get why people regard it as a classic. I mean, it's it's just a top top tier horror movie, top tier sci-fi movie. I mean, it's the bomb.com. So um, if you have not seen it. 10 out of 10 would absolutely recommend but yeah that's uh, basically all i have for my review so thank you for watching and peace out